All right, guys. I know we're late. We apologize. Some people had a hard time getting here, and um, we'd like to start the meeting. So welcome to the 106th running of the Chicago Yacht Club Race to Mackinac. I'd like to remind you the meeting is a courtesy. The skippers and people in charge um, uh, are responsible for reading and understanding the notice of race, the sailing instructions, the racing rules of sailing, all your rating certificates, certificates all the max safety rules, and uh, those sorts of things. Yeah, there we go. Uh, this year we have a number of new media opportunities, including uh, Instagram. Um, of course, Facebook is there, Twitter, Flickr. So there's plenty of opportunity for everyone to get on and let everyone know how much fun this is going to be this weekend as um, we float north. Um, we want to sail safe, we want to sail fast, and we want to have fun. And with that, I'd like to... Uh, Introduce Vice Commodore Greg Marecki from Chicago Yacht Club. Greg. Thank you, thank, thank you all. Um, my job today is pretty easy. I've got one welcome and four thank yous. So just in case you're keeping count. Uh, first of all, on behalf of our Commodore Jerry Bober, our flag officers, board of directors, and all of the members of the Chicago Yacht Club, I want to welcome you to the 106 Chicago Yacht Club race to Mackinac. Uh, Please, go ahead. All right. We've been waiting all year for this. It's the highlight of our year here at Chicago Yacht Club. We are delighted that you have chosen to join us uh, for the 106th race. Now our four thank yous. First off, I want to thank my friend Matt Gallagher. He's the uh, chair of the Mackinac race. Uh, is some, yeah, exactly. Thank you. As some of you know, I served a two-year term as MAC chair many years ago, and, and I can attest that it's, it's a time, very time-consuming job. So thanks to Matt for doing that. He is not here. He has got a good excuse. He's floating uh, north towards uh, Mackinac Island in the cruising division. I'd like to thank our sponsors. Uh, we've got seven of them this year. Vov Clico, Mount Gay Rum, Gil. Feel free to applaud. It's all good. Uh, Gil, our new gear sponsor this year. Michigan Avenue Magazine who's doing the Ashore Thing party uh, up at Navy Pier, Cro our friends at Crowley's Yacht Yard, West Marine, and a new sponsor this year, Sam Adams. <laughs> Thanks to all of them for their great support. I'd like to thank our world-class race committee. I know they're going to do a great job for us again this year, led by Janet Crabb, our principal race officer. And, and finally, and most importantly, I'd like to thank all of you. Uh, you are new and, uh, new and old, near and far, uh, new Mac racers, experienced Mac racers. You are what makes this race what it is. So again, welcome. We're delighted to have you. We look forward to racing together at Mackinac Island, and we will see you up on Mackinac. And with that, I'd like to introduce our vice chair, Mr. Jim Murray. So we want to just give a shout out to a few folks who are here who have put in a lot of time over the last 12 months to put the race together. So when I call your names, if you please stand up and uh, we'll just recognize everyone. Thank you. Um, so first I want to thank uh, my colleagues on the MAC committee, the vice chairman, uh, Janet Crabb. And we'll just go through the list, please. Hold your applause to the end. Jay Muller, David Hughes, Sarah Rentz, Jason Veach, and John Zienda. I think they're all around. Big round of applause. Thank you. Um, Tim Prophet. Tim, where are you? Are you here? Commodore Tim Prophet from Bayview Yacht Club. Very special welcome. Obviously, uh, the other Mackinac race. Um, we're delighted to have Tim here as a competitor once again. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. Thanks, everybody. I won't take much of your time. So uh, this is the uh, 20th time I've come over here to do this, and, and I, I love it, and uh, I'm, I'm working on getting it to be an old goat over here. I'm an old goat over there uh, with several years of spare. Um, the reason I asked to address you guys is uh, how many of you have done a baby Mackinac race? Excellent, excellent. Well, for those of you who have your hands down, next year is baby's 100th birthday. We're going to be doing something special for the race. I don't know what it is yet, but I do know it's going to be special. So since our race is second next year, 
it's a little easier for you guys to come on down to Port Huron. So on behalf of Baby Yacht Club and our Board of Governors and our members, I'd like to invite you to start planning now to attend the Baby Mackinac race for our 100th birthday. Thanks. Good luck this race. All right. So given that our chairman, Matt, is out on the water enjoying this nice, fresh afternoon breeze, uh, it falls to me to just give you a few reminders for the race. Um, first, and, and most importantly, just a reminder that uh, on the island, we are guests of Mackinac Island. Um, the behavior of uh, the fleet, your guests, your family, your friends, spectators, um, is very important to us. Uh, it's closely watched uh, by folks on the island. Um, you know, in general, we have a great experience this week. Um, but just remember that your behavior reflects not just on your fellow shipmates, but also all the competitors in the race. We'd hate for somebody who gets carried away to ruin the party for the rest of us. So please just bear that in mind, and let's try to keep everybody on the straight and narrow on the island. Second, um, a, a reminder on your yellow brick transponders. Uh, three points. First, remember that carrying a yellow brick transponder is a requirement under the notice of race. Um, you are not allowed to turn it off. You're not allowed to install it in such a way that you have an idea that it's not going to work. It is incumbent on the invited competitor to install it. You should all have them. I've actually checked and everyone has received them. Make sure it's on. Make sure that you can go to the app or the website that you see that it's actually working. Um, and uh, let's just make sure that that's all squared away. If you have any questions about Yellow Brick, tonight is the time to get it squared away. So please uh, definitely do that. Um, when you arrive at the island and you go to hand in your finish card, please be sure to bring your transponder with you. Otherwise, you're going to have to make another trip down. And again, it's vastly easier if you just bring it with you at the time you hand in your finish card. It's right next door in the tent. Everything gets squared away at the beginning. If you do not return the transponder, um, first and foremost, you'll be liable to ship it back to London. You're not going to want to do that with the customs forums. The second thing is, if you don't return it, there's a fine that actually gets assessed to the invited competitor. And you don't want to pay for a satellite transponder. So please help us out by taking care of that straight away. Um, second, um, in terms of the docking process, um, every year is different on the island. We've made every effort to accommodate everyone's requests for where you're going to dock, be it on the island or at St. Ignace or over at Max City. Um, Please be patient with the all-volunteer crew that handles docking. Um, I know you're going to be out there, you know, hopefully a short race, but perhaps a long one. And uh, people are tired, you're hot, you're sweaty, you want to get in, you want to get into the dock. They're docking 317 boats besides you. Just keep that in, in mind. It's a huge logistical effort, um, and we ask for your patience, your cooperation, and uh, politeness in dealing with all the volunteer members of the docking team up on the island. Um, so another reminder on that. Um, I'd like to do a couple more introductions. Um, yeah, first of all, Dr. Kopp, are you here? Where are you? Tom, do you want to come up and say a few words? Good evening. Uh, my name is Thomas Kopp. I'm one uh, emergency medicine resident physician trained down in uh, Toledo, Ohio. Um, I want to thank Race Chairman Gallagher as well as uh, Jay Muller to invite me, uh, me up here to discuss a little bit about a medical research study that we're conducting this year. We're looking at injuries and illnesses that occur during the race. And um, a similar study has already been done on the East Coast for the Newport Bermuda race. And we are uh, collecting data not only in the Port Huron race, but also this is the first year for the Chicago race, so we're very excited about that, to really compare um, differences between injury and illness patterns that occur in the Great Lakes versus the open ocean. So why this is important to you, well, certainly um, we can use that information to help better prepare for future races. And um, what we need from you is um, an effort to return the surveys. The surveys, there's a few that are available at the um, back of the tent today, but we'll also have volunteers, including myself, on the island to collect the surveys as you turn in your 
finishing card as well as your transponders. So um, with that, um, we hope that you guys have a safe race, a fast race, and we'll see you on the island. All right, two more quick notes. Um, first, uh, I want to introduce the members of our jury, um, another hardworking part of the team here. And without them, we would not be able to put on the race of the caliber that you've all come to expect. Um, Fred Hagedorn. Fred. And uh, while Fred's coming up, the other members of Fred's jury, um, Fred Horowitz, Andrea Kaczynski, and the jury secretary, Sam Veyu. Thank you all very much. I can tell you from the perspective of the judges, we want to see you all at the parties and nowhere else. So have a great race. Uh, I did want to point out there was one change to the sailing instructions. Uh, and we did this to try and make this a friendlier race for the sailors. Uh, if you didn't notice it, uh, there is an alternative penalty available to you for the first six hours. And then it turns off and doesn't turn back on again. And suddenly it became a obvious to us that if you did something that you knew you broke a rule and you wanted to fix it, the only way to fix it was to with, with withdraw from the race. And that really didn't seem to be what should be happening, especially since the protest committee has the ability, if there is a protest, to be able to assess penalties that are less than disqualification. So you now have the ability that if you think you've broken a rule, you can do the Corinthian thing and report it when you um, finish the race, file a little protest form, and come talk with the judges, and we'll help you figure out what an appropriate penalty would be for that so that you don't have to withdraw, and you can enjoy the race and not feel like you wasted your time on your way up to Mackinac, because we want you all to have a great time and sail all the way and sail hard and not focus on what I should have done. All right, well, all the very best. Have a great sail, and I hope to see you at every single party. Bye now. All right, and one last note. Uh, Jay mentioned earlier about our, our, our sponsors, and Greg uh, led off who they are. Um, a really important request for everyone here. Social media helps finance this race. It keeps the entry fee down, it covers the costs of the parties, um, and it allows us to put on a better race. So please, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, um, whatever is your particular fancy, encourage your family, encourage your friends to follow the sites, like the sites, visit them during the race, visit the Yellow Brick site. Um, the more hits we get on those sites during the course of the year allows us, and I'm on the sponsorship committee, to go out and actually put together a world-class sponsorship package each year. So please do that. Uh, with that, I want to hand it over to our principal race officer, Janet Krepp. Oh my goodness, he's tall. Um, thank you. And on behalf of the Chicago Yacht Club Race Committee and all the volunteers that run this race, I'd like to thank you all for being here. We love doing this race and we welcome you to Chicago. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I would like to make it. Can everybody hear me? It's echoing in my ear. Okay. Um, I would like to introduce some of the people that are very um, instrumental in putting this race together on our team. Um, I know that uh, Hella Getz is over here. Hella, would you stand up? <laughs> Jane, Jane McMillan. I'm not sure where Jane is. <laughs> Brian Harbaugh. Is Brian here? And of course, Janet Baxter, who is the race committee chair and head of docking. And Janet, are you here? I'm going to make this fairly quick, but I wanted to go over some of the in-house changes we made to the sailing instructions and just bring them to your attention so that you have that information. Um, the first and, and most important to my team is that we did, um, wow, well, we did, um, we cleaned up the, the language on the he headquarters so that we will move the headquarters into the Windermere Hotel if there's um, rain or inclement weather. We always move in Tuesday night 
um, we have found that somehow electricity, water, and race committee do not mix very well. So um, for their health and well-being, we're there. A couple other changes. That Wednesday morning call-in that no one wants to make because they're still out on the water Wednesday, um, we have added the ability for you to text uh, the PRO. Yeah. Um, but let me tell you, it's a dexterity test because you have to text your lat lawn and your sale number. So it's probably something that you'd like to avoid. Um, and I've got to be able to read it. So let's, let's get there before that. Um, the other thing we've changed is sailboards. Sailboards are very important. Um, it's not just that, that we want you to have to put them up at the end, dress your boat up. It's in, at, particularly at nighttime, it's the only way we can see you. And, you know, your crew is, is grumpy when they get off of watch. Imagine my crew getting off a of watch, your crew getting off a of watch, and having to sit in the same room for a couple of hours while we straighten out scores. That would not be pretty. We have also changed and asked you to put those sailboards up 0.5 nautical miles before the finish and keep them up until after your call in to the race committee for finish has been acknowledged. That sometimes we're unscrambling um, numbers even as that's happening, so please, that would be very helpful for us. Um, we have also put the entire official notice board online. You can get there by our regular website. You can go through the Chicago Yacht Club website. It's under race documents at the top of the page, or you can also find a button for official notice board on the left hand kind of bottom of the page. We will try and keep a courtesy notice board going at, in the tent as we usually do, but uh, feel free to look at the notice board anytime while you, you know, if, it's, if there's no wind and you have nothing to do, you can look at the official notice board. Um, some real quick reminders. Those five minute penalties that you get, let's not have those. We ha and we haven't had them, by the way. It's been very nice. 14.4, um, the Mac bridge call in and acknowledgement. If you can't get a hold of us and another boat can, please ask another boat to just let us know you're there. That's all we need to do. Um, and get your acknowledgement so that you're not getting a penalty. Um, be compliant with your sailboards. Make your, your finish call in and get acknowledged. Um, the, finish, the yellow finish card has to be turned in three hours after your finish, not after your docking. So if for some reason or other docking gets slowed down, make sure that they either initial your card, let, them, let us know that you had trouble docking. We, we're not going to give you a problem if we know that there's a problem in docking. So, and the other thing is, of course, the um, touch and go. Please obey that. Um, okay, you all know that the, about the parade of boats. Um, I will point out that the, there is a parade of boats, but it's not at Navy Pier, but that's not the check-in. You do need to go between the, the, the orange mark and the boat to come out. We will check you in that way. Well, that's, that's not the right one. That's not the right one either. Okay, back it up. Um, <laughs> one of my slides got lost. In the past years, we've had a whole lot of trouble. Um, it seems we've had a, a very good sense of humor about our starts with the box and the yellow things and the orange things. And um, we've seen some really interesting starts from the, from the race committee boat. They're very creative, but we can't give creative points. So we, we decided to, um, you know, put the other one on first. So what we did is we took away the box marks. We took away the marks at the, uh, at or near the starting line to cut down on the confusion. So you're going to find two green marks roughly 200 yards behind the starting line. And uh, that's what you're going to pretend it looks like. You, you're all pretty good about staying out of the starting area. You know it's, it's kind of dangerous to start getting close to the, the line, not at your start. It's dangerous enough at your own start let alone trying someone else's. So what we've done is we've, we've cut down the confusion on the starting line. There will only be those uh, green marks behind so that um, you, know, you can just kind of imagine that box. We'll see how that works this year. 
hope that's a little easier anyway. Um, how many are planning to get here, uh, get to, to the island by Sunday to come to the Porsche party? Aha! <laughs> okay, the Porsche party is at 5 o'clock. That's Eastern time, so that you all know. And I want you to all then pack your blazers and uh, make sure you have a tie, and we'll see you at the porch party, okay? <laughs> it's, we are very lucky in this race and on this lake to be served by a, an excellent staff of Coast Guard and Marine Police. I, um, I'm very lucky to have the commander, uh, Mark Stevens, from the Coast Guard Station Calumet. And he's going to say a few words to you. Good evening, skippers. Uh, everybody ready for the race? All right. Uh, I'll be the, uh, at the start of the race, I'll be the patrol commander uh, with the Coast Guard auxiliary boats and the Coast Guard boats. Uh, holding the safety zone, uh, keeping the start area clear of wreck boats, uh, and also the first couple hundred yards mile, up to half a mile uh, so you guys can get off to a good start. Uh, while you're racing, while you, after you start off, any issues, uh, of course, Channel 16, get a hold of Coast Guard. Um, if you're having issues with recreational vessels, interfering around the start, uh, make sure you give us a call either on 16, all of our patrol boats will be on channel 81 uh, coordinating around the start. So just let us know. Uh, I'll direct somebody over to intercept and clear them out of the way. Uh, also we have uh, Lieutenant Allison Schloss, commanding officer of the Chicago Marine Police. Uh, she, they're going to have boats out at the check-in by Navy Pierce. I'll turn it over to her. Hi everybody, I hope you guys have a really good couple of days racing up to Mackinac Island. And we're going to have our boats, while they're out protecting you at the start line, we're going to try to keep you guys safe coming into the check-in and going out through the gap. So if you guys need anything, I'll have a couple of boats out there. I'll be out there and we'll be on channel 16 monitoring everything that's going on. So just give us a holler if you need anything and good luck to everybody. All right, and now for the man that's going to be following you up to the island, I'll turn it over to Commander Godwin, the commanding officer, Coast Guard Cutter Mobile Bay. So it's like herding cats, right? 318 boats going up. Uh, look, we hope you have a great race. We're going to be out there at the start as well. We'll be anchored, staying out of the way ourselves, so... Uh, the, the Coast Guard Auxiliary doesn't have to get us out of the way. Uh, but, but once the last group takes off, our plan is to mirror the fleet uh, up to Mackinac. So we'll determine where that is, depending on where the wind is and where the majority of the fleet is. We'll have access to the transponders and kind of monitoring that fleet. If you have a problem, give us a call. We're on 16. Um, if we're out of range, just call 16 because we've got the Coast Guard sectors and the stations from here to there. They're all standing by. They understand the race is coming up. Uh, hopefully the weather will, uh, will, will help us out. Not too rough, but not too calm. Isn't that, that what you want? Yeah. Right? Yeah. All right. So uh, if, if you need anything, uh, let us know. We'll uh, meet you on the island. Uh, me and my crew are going to come over and uh, hopefully welcome uh, most of you there. Hopefully all of you. And uh, we'll see you there. Thank you. Uh, thank you all. Now we'd like to invite another member of the MAC Race Committee, Ron White, up here, who will tell us about the course and introduce uh, the people, the person we've all been waiting for. Ron? I'm the person you've been waiting for? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Say the Ron. nicest things. Um, first of all, I get the, to execute the most thankless responsibility in this job, announcing the course mix. 
Um, and I want to start out by apologizing for past sins. I came to a, 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 a realization this morning because I was reviewing the weather charts, and I picked one up, and I saw for all day Saturday 100% upwind. As I turned the chart right side up, I realized this isn't a job <laughs> that one should do while hungover. <laughs> So, so I, I'm, uh, hi, my name's Ron, and I, <laughs> <laughs> Thank, thanks for your compassion. Um, uh, by the way, has anybody seen a single upwind check mark on any weather chart? Okay, it's mostly off wind. <laughs> um, Last week in the Port here on the Mackinac race, I, I decided I had been way too hard on Chris Bedford with my introductions over the years because I, I was, you know, we had a couple of weather forecasts on the boat and I was reading some of the stuff that we see in these things and, you know, the, the blatantly obvious, sail north as quickly as possible. Uh, the one that really took my breath away last week was, if you see lightning, there may be severe thunderstorms. <laughs> Um, that might have saved me on Lake Ontario a few years ago. <laughs> but uh, so, so I walked up to Chris today intending to really compliment him about being so decisive and so precise in his forecast. And I, I, I was telling him that. And I said, by the way, Chris, I thought now that I buttered him up, I'll get some inside info. I got invited to join a pool uh, f for details on what percent of the time they would fly a spinnaker. And I thought, this is great. I can get inside information from Chris. And he, you know, he's going to nail this. He just won the America's Cup again. This, this guy's the best in the world. And so, so I, I told Chris what the deal was, that I was in this pool and I, I needed some help. And, and he, got, he, he broke out in a cold sweat and his hands started to shake. And he goes, I, I, I'm just a meteorologist. <laughs> I said, well, so what, what, what do you think? He goes, half? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I'm trying, Chris. Uh, seriously, Chris has done a fantastic job for us. This is his seventh year doing this weather briefing, briefing we think. It's his 30th Chicago to Mackinac forecast. Um, and he seriously did just come off of yet another America's Cup win. And Chris, it's always a pleasure to have you back. Thank you. Well, that was depressing. <laughs> All right, thanks, Ron. I think I'm afraid to come back next year. All right, uh, as always, it's great to be back here again, and now we're hoping for a uh, um, fast race up to the island. Hoping is the key word. And um, uh, actually, to be honest with you, the forecasts this afternoon are looking a little bit better, a little bit more promising. So uh, let's hope that trend continues. Um, the uh, one thing we talked about, uh, or we talk about in meteorology, is the predictability of the atmosphere. Sometimes you can say that the the uh, weather pattern is completely unpredictable, and other times you can say that's yeah, quite reliable. Uh, the forecasts this week have been very consistent. Uh, we had a little bit of uneasiness earlier in the week, but um, that's, that's abated, and uh, the forecasts have been quite consistent. So rating this as a fairly predictable race, but we do have a few uh, factors that could come along and, and change things uh, going forward. So it's always good to continue to monitor the forecast, always be aware of what's happening around you, whether or not it makes sense based upon your understanding of the weather forecast, and basically just keep an eye out for anything that doesn't look right. If it doesn't look right, it probably isn't right, and uh, you should be ready to change your plan if you have to. Um, it's your responsibility to monitor the weather conditions for the safety of your boat and crew, and uh, you should uh, always check in with the NOAA uh, VHF uh, uh, radio broadcasts to see if there's any uh, advisories or warnings that are popping up. Um, obviously, it's nice weather. You don't need to have it on continuously. No one wants to listen to that. Um, but uh, if things are starting to look uh, different, uh, you should probably put it, put it on more frequently and just be checking in and making sure you're aware of, of, uh, 
uh, the weather coming. Be proactive if uh, the weather looks like it's changing. Um, it's always uh, safety first, uh, racing second. Next slide, please. On that note, always start out with the thunderstorm forecast because that's um, uh, a big problem sometimes here in this race and in the Great Lakes this time of year. And if you see lightning, there may be severe thunderstorms. <laughs> And to be honest with you, actually, I'm going to actually have a point here. This is, this is true. The official definition of a thunderstorm is if you hear thunder, not if you see lightning. So a little bit of defense for my colleagues. <laughs> and I will admit that at 4 in the morning, I've probably written something exactly like that or probably a hell of a lot worse with writing a forecast. All right, so right now we're looking pretty clear for tomorrow. Um, there's some uh, possibility of some uh, thunderstorms up across uh, interior Wisconsin and into the Upper Peninsula, but nothing looks severe at this moment, and it looks like it all stays off the lake on Sunday. Um, the uh, next slide, please. On Sunday, uh, we do get a little bit of that possibility oozing into the uh, northwestern part of the lake, but again, I think all that day just just to the west, all that risk. So right now we're not looking for anything uh, in the next couple of days. Going into Monday and Tuesday, there is a, sort of an increasing chance each day uh, that we may get some showers and some thunderstorms, particularly up in kind of the northern uh, quarter of the lake. Uh, but right now, nothing severe is, is uh, on the horizon. So at the moment, we look pretty clear. But as I say, the weather forecast can change, and so you should continue to monitor that. Next slide, please. This is our surface analysis uh, as of this afternoon. And I've highlighted the main weather feature, which is uh, something that's going to basically stick around uh, through tomorrow and uh, into Monday. That's a high pressure that's sitting over uh, the eastern US right now. And I've drawn an ellipse there to show that it's extended across southern Michigan and into the southern part of Lake Michigan. And so we're going to stay under that high pressure area uh, basically through Sunday. Our next weather feature, or, or sort of a signal of our next weather feature, really, is that low pressure that's up over central Canada with a front that's extending down into the northern plains. That uh, trough feature uh, is going to become, is, is relatively stationary. There's sort of uh, energy moving along it toward the northeast, but it's not making a lot of progress toward us at the moment. That high is sort of protecting us. And uh, for the moment, I think that that high will continue to protect us. Uh, toward um, uh, Monday, Tuesday, though, we definitely start to get that feature moving closer to us. And remember I said that the forecasts have been changing a little bit recently? Well, that's where they've been changing, is, is the, the movement of that low pressure area, that trough just sort of moving closer to us gradually over time, and also kind of uh, dropping a little bit south uh, from Canada into, into Lake Superior. So that's the feature that if, if you're if listening to the broadcast or looking at the forecast tomorrow, we want to see if that uh, feature is starting to speed up at all. Next slide, please. The satellite image is uh, uh, pretty good right now. We've got a uh, weather system down to the south and southeast of us. Uh, that is all going to remain active tomorrow, but it should stay well to the southeast of us. We get a little bit of uh, fragmented high cloud over us just in the northwest edge of that, but that should be moving away and, and not a big factor. And then if you look out on the left side of the picture, you can see the uh, frontal system that I was just talking about over the plains that we'll be watching for future forecasts. Next slide, please. I put this slide in here because it's basically a little bit of weather porn for me. So. It's uh, a, a great image of, uh, of what the cloud cover looks like over the lake during, in the lake region during a lake breeze scenario where you have very light gradient, no real background wind. All the wind is being generated by the thermal. So we have over the cool lake, we have sinking air. And then over the land, we have uh, warmer rising thermals, which are generating the clouds. And you can see very clearly uh, the uh, uh, the sea breeze circulation with the rising air over the, the land and the sinking air over the lake making uh, clear skies. So, so anyway, I had my moment in my hotel room with that picture earlier, so we'll move on now. 
All right, this is the uh, radar image. Uh, you can see that uh, system down to the south is producing a fair amount of rain down there, but, but as I say, it looks like that's going to stay all well to the south and east of us. Uh, we don't have any problems, just some uh, ground clutter returns from the radar and some of the cumulus up over Wisconsin. Next slide. Uh, this afternoon, you can see these are the uh, winds that we had uh, earlier this afternoon on the lake. And you can see the lake breeze along the Illinois Wisconsin shore with uh, uh, southeast winds, basically what we have in here. But if you look up in the northern part of the lake, you'll see there's a bit more pressure. And it's mostly uh, southerly pressure. It's ticked in a little bit uh, blowing onshore uh, up toward um, uh, the northern part of Wisconsin. And then we have a little bit of a lake breeze that's trying to go on the Michigan shore. That extra pressure up there is something we're going to see consistently on the forecast charts for the next couple of days. That's related to the gradient of that low pressure area out to the nor northwest. So this is why I'm saying the position of that feature is very important. If that feature moves a little bit closer, then that stronger gradient will spread further down the lake and we'll get more pressure uh, building in the northern part of the lake as well. So that's, that would be... Uh, uh, speed this race up a little bit if for some reason the high reasserts itself and stays in place and that low doesn't move any closer to us then we'll stay with the lighter winds and the uh, just the lake breezes um, uh, that we've had here the last couple of days next slide please um, wave forecast not much or wave analysis not much happening on the lake obviously not much breeze not much waves next slide please all right this is an important slide these are the these are the water temperatures right now. It's important for two reasons. The first one is the water is very cold. It's unusually cold for this time of year. You do not want to be in the water. So if you can avoid being in the water, I highly recommend it. It is very cold this year. It's dangerously cold. If you find yourself in the water, um, it's not like a lot of summers where you can spend a considerable amount of time safely in the water uh, if you're sitting out there bobbing around. Um, but this year, the, the, lake, the average lake temperature is about 60, 61 degrees across the whole lake. It's quite cold. Um, the second reason it's important is because it's cold. And because it's cold, it will tend to collect high pressure. High pressure likes to sit over areas, uh, colder um, uh, surface areas. And so when we have that, that basically eliminates the gradient and it kind of slows down the gradient's ability to, to build onto the lake. And so uh, even if we have a little bit of gradient pressure increase or gradient increase, it's going to take longer for that to mix down than it normally would if the lake was its normal temperature for this time of year. So, because we have cold water, it's generally going to make gradient mixing less. The second effect it has on the wind is it, makes, it tends to make lake breezes stronger because we have a bigger uh, temperature difference between the cold air over the water and the warm air over the land. But it makes land breezes weaker because we don't, if, in order for a land breeze to blow, we need the land to be cooler than the water because the water is so cool this year and we won't be cooling the land uh, be, because of the time of year it is in July, much below that, it'll make the land breezes very, very weak. So if you normally in this race rely on land breezes to, to generate uh, the, your wind at night, it's going to be a little bit less reliable this, this year because of this uh, colder water temperature. So our night winds are going to tend to be lighter, even lighter, I should say, than they often are during this race. All right, next slide. All right, we'll get into the meat of the forecast now. And uh, so this is the forecast chart for tomorrow morning. You can see that weather system down across the Ohio Valley up into, uh, into Ohio and Lake Erie. Again, that looks like it's gonna remain in, in place there and actually move a little bit to the northeast and not bother us. We see the frontal system out over the northern plains. It's actually moved a little bit to the, to the east, uh, but the southern part of it across the northern plains is stalling out. So as long as that happens, uh, then it'll keep most of that uh, gradient pressure ahead of it out to the west of the lake. I've drawn a big H over southern Lake Michigan. That's almost dead over the coldest water spot in the southern half of the lake. Remember, there's that little donut of cold water from that analysis I just showed. 
that high will be sitting right over the middle of that. That's where there will be no wind in, in the middle of that high. But it's also where the uh, lake breeze will be generated from. So the lake breeze will form with air sinking in the middle of that high and spreading out onshore and creating the southeast onshore flow that I'm expecting, or east to southeast onshore flow that I'm expecting for the start here tomorrow. Next slide. So here's the modeled forecast. Um, and uh, we've got the colors related to the wind speed. Obviously, the cooler the color, the lighter the wind, the warmer the color, the stronger the wind. And then we have some streamlines on here. So this is for tomorrow morning. We see that there's a, a quite light wind in on the shore here. We'll actually have a little bit of a uh, southwesterly, probably, uh, at 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning uh, here at the Yacht Club. Um, out in the middle of the lake, there should be a, a light southerly gradient drift kind of around the high pressure area. And then uh, again, you'll see a little bit more pressure sort of up in the five to six, seven, eight knot range up in the northern half of the lake. Uh, and this is a, this, this sort of picture you're going to see quite frequently on the next few wind charts. Next slide, please. Here's the forecast for tomorrow uh, afternoon. And you'll see where I drew that H uh, down in the southern part of the lake is right where we have, expect to have the, cold, the, uh, the, uh, the lightest winds, the calm winds, uh, in the center of that little high pressure area. So that's where the lake breeze is going to be born. And it will come on shore. And so just in along the, the beach here uh, from Chicago north uh, up to the Wisconsin line, um, we should have a light onshore flow. I don't think. Tomorrow's lake breeze is going to be quite as strong as today's. I think it's going to be a couple of few knots lighter, but it, it, uh, it should be reliable. It will be there, and I think you'll, you'll be able to sail and get off more or less on time. Again, up in the northern part of the lake, we do have a lake breeze effects, but we're also seeing the effects of that stronger gradient associated with that system out over the, over the northern plains. Next slide, please. All right, so uh, this is the forecast for tomorrow evening. Again, you can see the high pressure over the southern part of the lake. That frontal system has moved to uh, sort of central and uh, eastern Minnesota, but it's stalled out now. The northern part of it is still going to move east uh, north of Lake Superior, but right now, as I said, it does not look like it drops down into, uh, into the lake region. Uh, you'll notice a little bit, the, the uh, colors on here are showing precipitation. You'll notice a little bit of uh, rain and uh, shower activity over Wisconsin and up into the UP. Um, that basically is uh, uh, from afternoon heating. I don't believe that will move out offshore. Again, the lake breeze uh, circulation for, will probably protect uh, from any of that stuff moving out into the lake. It'll stay clear and um, uh, sunny out over the lake area. Next slide, please. So here's the forecast for tomorrow evening. We still see that light spot right in the southern part of the lake with the, the air spinning out of the uh, high pressure area and onshore from the east and southeast here along the Illinois shore. And as you sail north, the, uh, uh, the wind gets a little bit stronger the further north you go uh, uh, north of the Wisconsin line. And uh, then again, we see more of that gradient uh, pressure still holding on in the uh, northern part of the lake. Next slide. So by uh, Sunday night, though, because we lose the lake breeze effect, the winds over the southern third of the lake diminish and, and die away. Uh, we still have uh, pressure, though, sitting up in the uh, northern uh, sort of half or even two-thirds of the lake. But you'll notice that nose of, uh, or cone of stronger wind extending down the Wisconsin shore. That's closer to that low pressure area out over the plains where we think that new gradient is going to slowly start to build in from. So all of this is favoring uh, being uh, Wisconsin to mid-lake as best you can, uh, moving up uh, from, from uh, the start on, on, on Saturday night into Sunday morning. Next slide, please. Picture hasn't changed a whole lot, at least over our part of the, uh, of the chart. That stationary front has given way to a second cold front that's moving in from the west. But again, the main axis of all that activity is staying well to the west of us. The high continues to protect us uh, from, 
from uh, the pressure. But what I'm seeing on these charts, it's a little bit different from this morning's forecast even and the forecast earlier in the week, is some of the gradient is, is starting to build down across northern Michigan, northern Wisconsin, and into the northern part of the lake. I'm taking that as a positive sign that we're going to see a little bit more breeze than we've been forecasting uh, for this race um, uh, on, the, on the coming days, particularly into uh, Monday. Next slide. So here's the forecast for Sunday morning. We've got maybe a little bit of land breeze effect uh, along the Wisconsin shore, but not much. It looks like most of the pressure uh, is offshore. Uh, again, you'll see that little nose of stronger breeze extending down. So that's what you'll be basically aiming for uh, to get into that pressure. And this is totally a rich get richer scenario because the further up you get, the first one into that pressure is just going to be sailing into more and more pressure all the time. Next slide, please. By Sunday, things start to look a little bit better. The southern part of the lake still has the lake breeze and is light, but you'll see more and more gradients start to fill in um, up to the north. Now, during the daytime, we have the heating of the land, and that helps to mix down some of that gradient pressure. So that, that actually helps to increase the uh, wind a bit during the day. But again, you can see that the pressure is favoring the center of the lake um, not so much the Michigan shore. The Michigan shore is going to try to go into lake breeze, but that actually looks like it causes the wind to lighten off on the Michigan shore. Next slide, please. So now by Sunday night, we, we uh, uh, have that, the remains of that front, that warm front still sitting across the UP. And then there's uh, the cold front, which is moving east, but you'll notice it's starting to stall again. Uh, so even though we get this new front coming in, it's still having a hard time breaking through this high. But different from the forecast this morning, for example, that high is starting to show uh, eastern uh, drift now. So it's moving off the lake and uh, starting to hedge to the east a bit. Uh, and that's, again, I th I'm taking as a, as a good sign. Next slide, please. So here's the pressure for Sunday night. You can see the gradient across the northern part of the lake. And, and again, the breeze just kind of ticked in from the southeast along the Wisconsin shore. A more aggressive right-hand shift along the Michigan shore where it's trying to go into, uh, into lake uh, breeze, but uh, actually causing the wind to get lighter. Uh, so best pressure still up through the mid part of the lake up to the Manitous and, and uh, then inshore of, um, or sorry, uh, east of uh, Beaver, you'll see there quite, quite a light spot. And this is because there's like a convergence between the lake breeze out of Lake Michigan and the lake breeze out of Lake Huron. Those two breezes sort of uh, negate each other and we end up with a light patch up there in the, uh, just off of Mackinac Sunday night. Next slide. So Monday, we're starting to get more and more into gradient pressure. We're actually holding on to more breeze over the lake. This may be a little bit of an optimistic wind speed forecast, in my opinion. Because the lake temperatures are so cool, I'm a little bit afraid that the model is producing too much mixing of the gradient down. So it may actually be a bit lighter than what we're seeing here. But, act, but we are at least starting to see now consistent pressure, even in the evening, across the entire lake. Still have that light spot up toward Mackinac Monday. Next slide, please. Monday morning, that stationary front now holds out to the east. The high is slowly drifting down, but now you'll see we've got a couple of isobars over uh, Lake Michigan, so that's indicating that that gradient is picking up, and uh, definitely we'll see winds building a little bit uh, as we go into Monday. Not expecting a, a massive increase, but just more consistent pressure and less reliance on the thermals to generate the breeze. Less, next slide, please. So here we are on uh, Monday morning again. You can see the, the southerly wind uh, pushing up the lake. And also our light spot, while still there, is filling in a little bit uh, up, up across Mackinac. Next slide, please. Then Monday. This is where we're starting to get more and more pressure, more and more gradient into the picture. We're actually starting to get winds now into the teens up across the northern part of the lake. And that's also helpful for pushing that light spot away from Mackinac and getting the wind um, uh, filling all the way into the finish. Next slide. All right, on Monday evening, we get, see a new weather system now developing out over the, the northern plains. Uh, that's a little bit stronger. The high continues to move to the southeast, so we're getting another isobar again across uh, uh, 
uh, Lake Michigan, so another push of uh, pressure uh, in on Lake Michigan there. So just kind of gradually improving things with time. Next slide, please. And then here's uh, Monday evening. You can see the, uh, the flow up the lake, as I was, I was mentioning. Uh, we do get a little bit of a return of the light spot up at Mackinac, so toward Monday night we might see things ease off there. Again, that's because of the two Lake Huron and Lake Michigan breezes colliding. Next slide. Okay, we're, we're now into Tuesday night, and uh, we see that gradient pressure now filled up uh, across the lake. Very little change uh, from, the, uh, from the evening. Next slide. And now we've got a bigger weather system coming in, and we also start to see some weather start to come into the picture from the west. And that stationary front or warm front, whatever it is, is actually uh, just across the UP. So this is where we may see a deterioration of weather and an increased probability of thunderstorms going into Tuesday uh, morning. Next slide. Uh, still have the, the gradient across the, uh, uh, the lake, but you'll notice the winds are getting lighter now up across uh, Wisconsin and uh, northern Michigan, and that's because that frontal system is, is moving in. We're also just off the chart there, have a wind shift to the north. So we'd be watching to see if that system is going to move faster through so that by Tuesday we could actually see a significant wind shift. Next slide. Same thing for Tuesday, still have the southerly with the front just out to the northwest at that time. Next slide, please. All right, so here's some routes uh, that I ran using uh, a number of different polars, fast to slow. And uh, there really is not a significant difference in the basic strategy given that forecast. Because the basic wind field structure is so static through the, through the forecast, regardless of whether you're sailing a fast boat or a slow boat, you basically follow the same strategy. So out of the start, you're basically staying along the Illinois-Wisconsin shore uh, for the lake breeze, and you're trying to take that as far north as you can. Eventually, you'll run out of it, and you'll want to try and hedge a little bit toward the middle of the lake to try and aim for, remember, that cone of pressure. Try and aim for that cone of pressure that looks like, or knows, that'll be sticking down in the lake and try and be, uh, get into that to carry you north. Then as you go up the lake, you're basically in a uh, southerly, uh, taking that north. And then, as I said, there may be a little bit of a slower finish coming into, uh, uh, into Mackinac. You'll notice that there was one route that split Beaver. That's the fastest boat. So the fastest boat, because it gets up to the north so quickly, it actually goes to the other side of Beaver because that's where the pressure is. Remember, uh, on Sunday and uh, uh, early Monday, the pressure on the Michigan shore is quite light. So it actually uh, favors going uh, west of Beaver to get, get north, whereas the other slower boats are, are going more for the shortest course um, uh, route. So that's it. I wish you all good luck, and uh, see you next year. All right, so we'll ask the question again, who's planning on being at the party on Sunday night? <laughs> Make your hotel reservations for Tuesday night. Um, thanks, everybody, for your patience. Uh, remember, stay safe, sail fast, and we'll see you guys all up on the island. Thanks again.